Magnezone is currently rarely used competitively, but it's got overall great offense with a huge base 130 special attack and nice defense to go with it. But the problem is that it's slow, so let me cook for a second. I'm gonna use Zap Cannon, which is a 120 power stab electric move, but it's only 50% accurate. If we hit, we get some huge damage, but if we miss, we activate our Blunder Policy held item, which now doubles our speed. Zoom in Magnezone now outspeeds most opponents and hits hard with dual stab thunderbolts and flash cannons, and Blunder Policy Magnezone is a ridiculous gimmick, but I'm crazy enough to try it. So look, here's the thing, is this set broken and game changing? No. But is it fun and ridiculous? Absolutely yes, and that is what we are all about over here. If you're into that kind of thing as well, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k and you could really help your boy out. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Sableye. Now this little gremlin as a lead, a lot of the time he's gonna have Taunt to just block the Stealth Rock. And as I lead off with the Gastrodon, I realize there's really nothing stopping me from at least going for it anyway. If they Taunt, you know, kinda so be it. So it turns out they actually go for the Fake Out, which ends up working out because it doesn't do much to me and then they take Rocky Helmet and then we're in a better spot than they are. So now they're actually gonna go ahead and bust out the Prankster Rain Dance. So that leads me to believe that's there to boost something like the Quackaval in the back, potentially Hurricanes incoming. And I just lay down my Stealth Rock to play it nice and safe because I am the safe kind of slug. So at this point, I realize this thing can't really do too much to me, but also I would like to get in my Pin Kirchen to bust out the Electric Terrain to try to get some electric shenanigans going. So. It turns out they're actually going to end up switching into the Dragapult. Now this thing is always a problem. I've said it many times before, but you never know what this ghostly little fella is going to have in store in you. For, so as I go into the Pin Kirchen here, I do of course get up that Electric Surge. I do have the Terrain Extender item, so that's going to stick around. And I'm going to straight away bust out the Memento in case this thing wants to set up. Now here's the thing. A lot of the time Dragapult can have clear body negating stats drops and as I expected to maybe have that I'm also thinking maybe it's infiltrator but yeah no it's it's clear body and essentially I just knocked myself out at the cost of basically coming in <laughs> throwing some lemonade on the ground and that's kind of all I get to do so clear body absolutely hoes me but it's a risk I was willing to take however at least now I have the opportunity to bring in the magnezone so it's time to get this thing going and I'm gonna go right for the zap cannon as it turns out they're gonna bust out the dragon dance Physical Dragapult is a bit scary. I am at least bulkier on the physical side, so I'm kind of fine with that. I'm hoping for a miss on the Zap Cannon. However, I do connect, which doesn't end up being the end of the world, because not only do I get a whole bunch of chip damage, but also I get the, the freaking Paralyze, which is amazing, because now they are reluctant to stay in. They're going to go ahead and try to conserve the Dragapult for later. And I'm going to continue firing off Zap Cannons out here. Like, my freaking life depends on it. And as they go into the Sableye, I'm like, please miss. Nope, I connect. And that's annoying because, I mean, I killed the Sableye, but it's like, I'm look, I'm fishing for a miss here at this point. The fact that I've just hit two of them in a row is something that should not even happen, but hey, it's fine. I take care of the Sableye, which is great, and at least it, it allows them a revenge switch in. So they're going to bring in the freaking Boxing Glove Flamingo, and I'm going to go ahead and bust out the Terra Flying here. I know that this thing is going to be able to outspeed me. And a close combat is not something I feel like dealing with. So the reason why I bust out the Flying Terra is defensively now I know that I can take one. And I give myself another shot to miss a Zap Cannon to activate that Blunder Policy. And then Magnezone is going to be faster than everything. So they do close combat. It doesn't do much through the, the freaking balloons. And now I connect on another Zap Cannon. I, I am convinced that if you have the Blunder Policy item, it, you, the game doesn't let you miss. It, it's actually broken in that sense. And I will stand by that. <laughs> so stupid. So I connect on another one, at least kills the Flamigo. I'm like, hey, this is actually working out in a way that it wasn't supposed to, but I'm fine with that. Now, as they go into the Dragapult once again, I'm going to fire off a Zap Cannon, and I do actually miss this time, which is kind of nice, because that is going to pop the Blunder Policy. I always think it's hilarious, like the Pokemon pulls out a piece of paper out of their pocket, and like, yep, so this says, if I miss, now I'm faster, so fuck you. And as I do end up getting that boost, they actually go for the Dragon Darts, and I actually live it with 8 HP. That is because Magnezone deep down is still a Steel-type. We have good physical defense. That is actually amazing, because now I can fire off a T-Bolt. It is able to take care of the Dragapult. And now, officially, we're in full form. You know, I have my speed doubled. I have the Electric Terrain boosting my Electric Attacks. And Magnezone is going places where no Magnezone has gone before. So, 
As they bring in the Dancing Duck, I imagine this thing has the chance to have an Aqua Jet, which would be not ideal for me and kind of rain on my parade. However, they're actually going to end up busting out a Terra Water for some reason. They they want to they want to boost the water. I don't. Maybe they just click the Terra because there's nothing else for them to really do at this point. First, the Magna Zone. Regardless, the Water Terra definitely is not going to help out because I do outspeed. They don't have the Aqua Jet and a Thunderbolt <laughs> just easily takes care of it. So the Terra there may have just been I don't know. Regardless. Magnezone going crazy on them, and they definitely did not see this coming. So the bad news is that the electric terrain goes away, because as they have the Oricorio here, the electric terrain actually would put me in a spot to be able to grab a kill with the boosted electric, but now without that boost, I decide to go for the zap cannon thinking, hey, maybe I can hit one again, and of course not. I don't have the blunder policy, so of course I miss, which is just annoying. So in acrobatics reveals this thing is going to be a physical... Uh, Oricorio, which is interesting, and that does take care of my Magnezone, so we don't get, you know, the continued you know, full sweep there, but we've done enough work to the squad where I'm feeling like I can pull, I can take care of this, and all I gotta really do, I decide to go into the Pheasantipity, so I am obviously here to sponge special attacks, we did see that this thing is physical, although it hasn't used up an item yet, so acrobatics is not gonna be full power, now I go for the poison jab, which is gonna activate the toxic chain, which is what exactly we are looking for there, is going to now give it a bad poison, but it also knocks it down to range to where it's actually going to get a citrus berry. So Buddy's going to heal up a little bit and also now have a doubled power acrobatics, but it's doing around half to me because Pheasantipity, this thing does have a lot of physical investment and uh, the poison at least helps out to the point where I can just go for another jab here and then I'm thinking the poison damage just takes care of it, but it doesn't do quite enough. The bad news about having so much you know, defensive investment is that we hit like a freaking spitball and it doesn't do much. So. Uh, another acrobatics doesn't quite take us out, but we are in fact faster, so I can just finish this thing off with a jab, and down goes the freaking cheerleader bird, and that thing was weird. So, Pheasantipity is basically used up at this point, but they do have one mon left, and that is going to be a Moongus. There is in fact a Fungus. A Moongus in this thing is, I, mostly, I have easy ways to take care of this with a lot I have in the back. But I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go for a dual wing beat, grab myself a little bit of chip here, and then just essentially go down. But then I realize this thing actually doesn't really have anything it can hit me with. I'm assault vested, and I resist both of this thing's stabs. So as it goes for the clear smog, I live that easily, and I can just fire off some more wing beats. I'm going to go ahead and wing beat him off twice, pause, and that is going to at least make it manageable. And then I'm like, okay, go ahead and just go down here, Pheasantipity, but they pollen puff. And I live that, because Fez, Fez is, just never dies to a special attack, at least. And that allows me to continue to dual wing beat. I wish I, I wish Toxic Chain would work on things that can't normally be poisoned. but actually be make the ability way better. An already good ability way better. So, at least one more Clear Smog finishes off the freaking Fez. And then I'm like, finally, I've been trying to catch you boys all damn day. I'd like to buy all your chocolate. I can now just go into the Galarian Moltres here. Or actually, no, wait, no False Alarm, we go Low Kicks. Because Jiminy Cricket likes to come in and uh, give you a nice firm handshake with the first impression here. And that is going to be able to take care of the Amoongus. So ridiculous game for a ridiculous set, Magnezone. And <laughs> I thought that was just a fun one. So that's going to do it for game number one. But you already know, we got to test this bad boy out once more as we do have game number two. So now is a good time to ask if you've enjoyed the video so far and have made it to this point in the video. You might as well just hit that like button. I don't know what you're waiting for. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. So this time, Buddy's gonna go ahead and lead off with my arch nemesis, the freaking Grim Snarl. This thing's waist is snatched, and I just know this asshole's got a lump of light clay over there, ready to just throw up some screens and make my whole my level life a whole lot worse offensively. So they do, in fact, go ahead and set up the reflect turn one because nobody's ever created with a freaking Grim Snarl, and they only ever just throw up screens and then parting shot and then just be a dick about it. So. <laughs> I set up my stealth rock here, which is what this uh, this perk's here to do, and now I'm like, you know what, at least I, what I can do is go for a knockoff. It's going to make it so that the next time this thing decides to set up screens, it's not going to stick around for nearly as long, and that's at least going to help me out a little bit. So I do get rid of that light clay, and then I'm like, well, you know, this thing can't really hurt me in return, so I'm just going to fire off earthquakes here and just try to get some chip or something. Good news is I do ha at least have coverage with Magnezone, you know, and the flash cannons are going to be looking good against that thing, but this guy in general has... A very scary team for pretty much all of my offensive stuff, especially with both of those screens up. And now they decide to parting shot into friggin' old bullhead over here. So I am behind to reflect and parting shotted, and that barely tickles the guy. Leftovers is gonna heal right back that damage. 
And uh, the Stanley Cup at freaking trophy head over here is... This thing's annoying as well. It can set up Stealth Rock, it sets up Spikes, it goes for Ruination to do half your damage. And I'm like, well, maybe I can at least try to take advantage of the fact that I know... I feel like this thing wants to potentially just set up rocks here and then set up some spikes. So what I decide to do is go into the Hisuian Zorark. Now, the, f the last Mon in my party is going to be the Magnezone. So it looks like I switch into Magnezone here. We got the little Photoshop going. And they do go for the spikes here. So with one layer of spikes set up, I'm thinking, okay, well, we're behind Light Screen. And my entire team's not going to be able to do too much here, which is annoying. But I can at least try to go ahead and set up a nasty plot looking like a magnezone i'm feeling like i'm probably not that big of a threat i go ahead and bust out that nasty plot gonna go ahead and double the special attack and i'm thinking please go for more spikes but instead they they just go for the earthquake there so he's gonna get a crit knocks me down to my focus ash which is fine another reason why i wanted to go zorark early is just because i wanted to come in before the hazards get set up just to ensure you know that focus ash stays intact but now the the, the gig is kind of up at this point I, at least i <laughs> I have a nasty plot, but I'm not going to be able to do really anything to this. Especially behind the light screen, so the plan with the Hisuian Zorak was kind of just ruined from the start there. So, I yell at him, I get the Hyper Voice off just to do some minimal chip there, and it actually is going to bust out the Whirlwind, because it's going to switch me out. Now the next time I come in, I essentially just die to the hazards, which sucks. But, as it brings me into the Swampert, it's not the end of the world. I can at least kind of stay in here, waste some turns of those screens and then also you know Zorok being at 1 HP in the back kind of isn't the worst because that's going to basically allow me a free pivot turn into that as like a, a death fodder switch and that's sometimes not the worst so I decided to go for the knockoff there I figure I'm sick and tired of this asshole eating his leftovers so no more healing for you and uh, they're going to set up some more spikes I know I, again I, I just can't touch anything with these hazards set up I just hit like a freaking not not hard moral of the story so i go for the flip turn here does at least do a good bit of damage i don't have any other water stab other than flip turn but it now allows me as uh, they set up another layer of spikes to just go into the zorark i figure no matter what they want to go for here which is probably going to be the whirlwind it's going to allow me a nice little at least free pivot switch into whatever i want so i come in i die to the spikes dramatically and they just whirlwind the air there so now you can at least decide to switch in whatever i like and now the Reflect goes away. So that actually makes me feel good about potentially going into the uh, Galarian Zapdos here. The Kicking Chicken is here to go ahead and kick some ass. And with them big old feats, it's going to hurt quite a bit. We know that definitely they probably want to pivot out here. And a Stab Close Combat does a lot to just stuff in general. So they are going to get that thing out of there. Going to save the Ting Lu for later. And something is about to catch these talents. So they actually end up going into the Grimmsnarl here. Close Combat going to be a neutral hit. It actually... Ends up living it with 1 HP, which is like, that's the worst guy you, you want to see with 1 HP. Because as the light screen wears away, they no longer have a reflect, and now they have a decision to make. They're going to be able to get up one screen of their choice, and it turns out they're going to go for the reflect. They're likely just more worried about my physical attackers here, which is fair, and I can finish it off with that close combat. Luckily, however, it's only going to stick around for the five turns, as opposed to the full eight with the light clay, because we got rid of those. So, down goes the Grim Snarl, and that is pretty solid. So... They're looking at a situation where they can bring in whatever they like on the empty switch here. And they actually decide to bring in the Greninja. So we are behind the Reflect. And I don't know if this thing wants to bust out a Terra. I'm really feeling like I could just stay in in close combat. I am Choice Scarf, keep in mind. However, I'm just going to end up switching into Swampert. The Pert doesn't look super useful for this matchup. But honestly, my main goal at this point is to try to bring in Magnezone. I'm feeling like I actually have a pretty good shot at, at getting the Magnezone going. So I'm going to bring in the Anchor Arms here and take some spikes, but also now they're just going to Ice Beam, which is fine. And uh, kind of, at least I wanted to see a little bit about what this Greninja wants to do. So they actually now end up switching. I feel like with a like something like a Hydro Pump, they definitely have enough to take care of me. And uh, they're going to end up bringing in the Long Noodle. Clifford, the, the big Long Noodle, comes in. And uh, once again, the freaking Panther with the crazy sword fangs is scary. As I go for the Earthquake, they do still have that Reflect up, so it's not going to do as much as it should. Except at this point, I'm uh, just going to stay in here. I don't really want this thing to get out of hand, so I'm just going to Earthquake. And a Sacred Sword does take care of the Swampert. So, while ordinarily Magnezone doesn't look great as a switch into this, I'm feeling like, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. I have the Flying Terra. Which is kind of a double-edged sword, because it's like, I know they want to go for a fighting move against me first. So I can go for the Flying Terra to resist that, but then it's like they have the option to obviously hit me with the Ice move. 
But the plan is either I hit the Zap Cannon or I miss it, making me faster. So I'm going to bust out the Terra Flying. And uh, we are going to be a UFO with freaking balloons on our head because we are just absolutely ridiculous out here. So Flying Terra defensively is going to help me a whole lot as they do go for that Sacred Sword, which is amazing. Doesn't really do any damage here. Now I'm hoping for a Zap Cannon miss. And hell yeah, it actually happens this time. The 50% is going to work in our favor. And that's going to activate the Blunder Policy. So... While that is generally good, I know that I'm I know I'm gonna be faster than the Chen Pao at this point, and I also know that this thing has the priority with the Sucker Punch. It's looking like the only Mon on their squad that's gonna have priority. So I'm thinking hopefully my defense can help me out here. They do go for that sucker punch, and we do actually live because Magnazone is a freaking beast. Now allows me to fire off a flash cannon and take care of the Chen Pao. So that feels super nice. That's a big threat out of the way. And now Magnazone's just faster than everything, so we get to see what we can possibly do with this. So, I feel like they forget how fast this zone is zooming at this point, because as they now go into the Greninja, I'm thinking maybe they have the priority. But nope, I just straight up Thunderbolt right through them, and that's going to take care of the, the frog. Ninja frog out of the way. And Magnazone outspeeding stuff is just super fun to see, because it's not, it's not something you expect to see every day. So, here's the situation. They now are able to bring in the Garganackle, and... I'm looking at this matchup thinking the only way I grab a kill here is to go for a Steel Beam. Bad news is I end up killing myself, but that's going to knock him down to two Mons, and I feel like that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. I go for that Steel Beam, does huge damage, and it is going to take care of the Garg. No matter how especially defensive that was, I figured it was just kind of my best option there. And it is going to take care of myself, but Garganaku going down is something I'm willing to trade anything for, so I'm totally fine with that. At this point, they have two Pokemon left. It is going to be the Ting Lu along with a Tinkaton. So, I decide to bring in the hot dogs. It's never a bad time to be barbecue grilling out here. Sometimes you got to just throw the dogs on the grill. And also, I have coverage on Tinkaton, which is kind of what I figured they would switch into here, which is great. And the hammer is not going to enjoy... You're not going to be able to play Whack-A-Mole today. That's actually kind of funny. Somebody draw a picture of a, of a Tinkaton playing Whack-A-Mole with Doug Trio, please. So, I go for the Earthquake. And it's going to take care of it. The uh, Choice Banded Doug Trio does a bunch, and you're going to have a bad time. So, final mon is going to be that Ting Lu. And finally, we've got this thing in a spot where we want it. It is around half HP after that Stealth Rock, and I'm like, okay, maybe I can actually kill here just with an Earthquake. And Doug Trio can just be my freaking savior. So, that's what we're going to go for. We're going to bust out the old Stab Choice Banded Earthquake. And they're actually going to pull out the, the late game Terra. They're actually going to end up busting out the, what, Terra Dark? Just doesn't really help him defensively, I guess. But also maybe boost the dark move. I don't know what kind of coverage Buddy's working with. But he pulls out the dark. And as my earthquake comes through, it actually is going to end up living. Because once again, this thing literally never dies. And an earthquake is actually going to knock me out. So joke's on Doug Trio. I didn't get the, the little late game sweep I was looking for. But we got enough damage on the guy to the point where all I need to do is bring back in the kick and chicken. And do what kick and chicken does best. And that is going to go ahead and punch this. I'm going to break this freaking rusty, busted bull even further than it already is. And a close combat is going to finish it off. And that is going to be the end of the map. So that's going to do it for the game. I thought that was just another just fun match. This team is kind of just stupid, but it can kind of work. I don't know. Regardless, thank you guys very much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this one. Hopefully you did as well. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.